Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 44 of our Starbase Weekly Update. There's a lot of interesting new developments to cover, so let's jump in. A number of objects began moving around this week to the launch site for launch mount load testing and Starship transport, including these two self-propelled modular transporters. Sunday began with the removal of a suspected calibration or testing rig from the launch mount clearing the way for the installation of the new hardware. Shortly after the equipment was removed, a new high-pressure gas storage tank was lifted onto the orbital launch mount. Over at the build site, Ship 28's common dome section with the dome fully welded together with its barrel was flipped upright. Mirroring Ship 24's PEZ dispenser, a ship payload bay door cover was moved to the high bay to be installed on Ship 25. A pair of self-propelled modular transporters were also brought over to the Mega Bay area, likely ahead of Booster 7's rollout sometime this week. Late in the evening, now fully fabricated Ship 26 was lifted off the welding turntable in the high bay. Meanwhile, at the launch site, the thrust bearing swivel, part of the load testing mechanism for the orbital launch mount's hold-down arms, was placed in the center of the launch pad. A little before noon on Wednesday, the payload bay door cover for sealing up Ship 25's door was hoisted up to be welded in place. With the load testing hardware connected to the support arm's clamps, SpaceX's Grove Crane was disconnected from the assembly for the first time. Once the testing weights on the transporters were slung onto the lifting device, load testing on the orbital launch mount's arms began. With 10 pairs of clamps to test and multiple tests to perform on each pair, crews had a lot of work ahead of them to verify the mount's ability to hold a fully fueled ship and booster. Back at the build site, Booster 10's methane tank was unexpectedly moved from Mega Bay to the Mid Bay. After spending the night hooked up to the crane, Ship 24 was lifted off the suborbital pad and placed on a transport stand. While concurrently testing the orbital launch mount, the chopsticks performed a rising test as the operation plan continues to move forward towards a full-scale wet dress rehearsal. Later that night, the load testing assembly was moved onto a second pair of clamps to verify their load capacity and alignment. This week's launch operations at the Cape began with Doug's return to port with both fairing halves from the Starlink Group 5-1 mission. Following the launch of Starlink 5-1, Crosby Skipper pulled a shortfall of Gravitas into port with Booster 1062 held securely on deck by the Octagrabber. Three hours after its arrival, Booster 1062 was transferred from a shortfall of Gravitas to the dockside stand where it will spend the next few days. Ringing in the new year, Bob headed to recover the fairing halves of the Transporter 6 mission, which would take place two days later. Fair enough, Transporter 6 launched on Booster 1060 for its 15th flight early on Tuesday morning before performing a return landing to the launch site. On Wednesday, Booster 1062 was placed on the horizontal transporter stand to be refurbished at Roberts Road for its next mission. Buckner's reconfigured LR-11350 crane began setting up an elevated working jig for chopstick assembly at Launch Pad 39A. The chopstick units were brought over before being assembled ahead of an installation on the tower. Bob made its return to port following the Transporter 6 launch with both parent halves on Wednesday. Jig assembly continued into Thursday, where the upper level load beam, which the top carriage arms will rest on during assembly, was lifted into place. And that concludes another weekly update of Starbase Texas and Cape Canaveral, Florida, brought to you by La Padre. We hope to see you again next week for more exciting events and updates, and thank you again for tuning in.